Well, hey everybody. Thank you so much for making the time to come and chat with us today as we get ready and get really excited for International Female Ride Day coming up on Saturday, May 7th. Uh, with me today, I am so excited to be speaking with Sharon St. Croix, the Executive Director of Rider Training Institute, affectionately known as RTI, and Sharon Brooks, who is the Fleet and Equipment Coordinator for RTI, as well as a Senior Instructor. Uh, I am Erin Mitchell. I'm the current uh, General Manager of Blackbridge Harley-Davidson and Rockies Harley-Davidson. And I have my colleague and friend, Michelle Sullivan, who is our Director of Brand Ambassador, uh, here with us as well. So we are so excited to be able to prioritize spending some time together this afternoon and talking about the importance of women in riding as we look forward to getting together and uh, going for a long ride and celebrating this journey and women in this space and the sport together on May 7th. So thank you so much, ladies, for being here. We're really excited to have you. Thanks for having yeah. us. Awesome. So for people who aren't say, very familiar with RTI, the Rider Training Institute, why don't you tell us a little bit about your organization and how you got started there? And then we would love to chat more about your journey in riding and sort of the ups and downs and all the roads that you've been on together. So, For sure. Um, RTI was incorporated in late 20, uh, 2001. So our first season was 2002. We are a not-for-profit organization and we offer both licensing courses and skill development courses. Uh, we have locations throughout Ontario and um, we are run by a volunteer board of directors. So again, not-for-profit. So the board of directors hired me in 2002 and it was my introduction to the sport of motorcycling. And uh, we have been growing exponentially over the years, and it's a wonderful, wonderful place to be. Sharon, I love that you mentioned that RTI was your introduction to the sport of motorcycling, because I think Michelle and I can actually say that RTI was also <laughs> our introduction to the sport of motorcycling. Uh, when we took 100%. over the dealership back in 2019, I had convinced Michelle and another one of our colleagues, I'm like, hey, if we're gonna work in this space and we're gonna be authentic in this space, we definitely need to learn how to ride a bike. So we spent a very cold April weekend with RTI and uh, you know the relationships that we built there, not only in learning how to ride, um, have been relationships that we've carried forward with us here at the dealership. And we love talking about um, how easy it is to get into the sport and that you can really just you know start from a really supported and uh, um, welcoming space and that is not very intimidating to get into into riding so I mean we, we, we promote RTI a lot here in both our stores and thank you for all the ways that you've made it easy for us to help other people uh, engage in learning to ride so <laughs> so Sharon tell us a little bit about your journey and how you uh, how did you enter, you know, how did you get into the sport and how did you connect with RTI? Um, I started riding when my husband who rode when he was younger came home with a motorcycle. Someone did his work and I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. And I was on the back of it once and my um, personality does not allow me to give up control. So I was on the back once and I said, okay. Let's go and uh, learn how to ride a motorcycle. Um, when I started, the options like RTI were not as pre prevalent as they are today. So I searched out a training school. Uh, Greg actually came with me. He was experienced, but he came with me on my initial journey and uh, the rest is history. I have um, I now work full time for RTI, but I started teaching in 2005. I was at a bike show and I met Sharon and some other people from RTI and I thought, I bet you I could do that. And uh, one of the best things I ever did was uh, becoming part of Roger Training Institute. It's, uh, my, I lost my job through retirement um, in 2008 and then I started working full time. So now uh, motorcycles is my life. Couldn't be better. Sharon, you said something really interesting yeah. there in that you your first your your motivation for learning how to ride was because you didn't want to be a passenger and you wanted to be in control did you have any hesitancy about that and as an instructor do you see 
a lot of women entering the sport because of their experiences either riding with a man, like with their dad, with their boyfriend. Absolutely. Absolutely. There are some of us that uh, kind of, as a youngster, always wanted to do it just like the boys, but there are more women that uh, usually I've been on the back and I've had enough of that. I want to now have my own motorcycle. There are some men that tend to send their women to <laughs> learn how to ride to kind of get them off the back. There's a kind of different um, perspective when they arrive, but most women, once they get on a motorcycle and the joy and the freedom, and it's a lot of hard work. And it's to become adept at it and really good at it, but the hard work that you put in, the fulfillment that you get once you've mas not mastered, because we never really master the skill of riding, but just the joy of being able to be in control of a motorcycle and the freedom, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's um, great. The women coming to us, 99% of them want it from here. And when it comes from here, they're going to be successful. Sometimes it takes us a little bit longer for our journey, but uh, most of us are successful. When we so a so question both for both the Sharons. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Aaron, a question for both Sharons. I'm curious to know how you've seen the percentage um, increase, I guess, over the years of how many uh, women you see coming out to the courses and the interest that you've seen over the last two decades, I guess, now that you've been offering the program. Yeah, it definitely has increased from the beginning. At one point, I think we were up to close to 24% female, which, you know, some people might think is low. But when we started, we were probably close to maybe 12 or 13. Mm -hmm. uh, and considering that we teach close to 5,000 people a year, I mean, that is quite a large number. Sharon and I were actually discussing this earlier about uh, because over the last two years, we have seen the number of female riders decrease just a little bit. But mm -hmm. as you know, over the last two years, we have been going through some experiences that we've never had before called COVID. And, you know, we thought perhaps because, you know, the females are, you know, the mothers of children and perhaps, you know, they've been taking extra precaution in not participating in certain events that they would normally try. Um, but it definitely, except for the last two years, there definitely has been a quite a, a steady increase in percentage and, and all age ranges. It's not just, you know, the 20 year olds. We have, you know, people who are 16 who just want to get their motorcycle license before they get a car license. And then we have people who, you know, as couples, perhaps they're in retirement age and maybe the husband already does ride. And now the, you know, his wife is saying, wow, you know, this would be a really neat way to spend some of our retirement time. And I want to, you know, get on the bike and be able to go out with you. So aside from being introduced to the sport by, you know, um, like a boyfriend or a father or a husband, um, what other opportunities would you like to see to create space for women to engage in the sport of riding? Is that to both of us? Or is that sure, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, even even to Michelle too. It's, it's something I've always been curious about. That if the majority of women who enter the sport of riding are attracted to that sport or curious about that sport because of relationships that they've had with men who have been riding, how do we create a space uh, like a f female community to encourage women to join us in the sport? What would you like to see happening, and how could we do a better job of that as women welcoming women into the sport? I mean, there are some really great female riding groups um, that do a lot of community outreach. And that is certainly something that I think is helping the numbers. But, you know, it is quite interesting. We're talking about motorcycling, but we have to remember that other than on road, there's already there's also off road. Right. So just because you're a motorcyclist doesn't mean you're necessarily riding on the road. And there are statistics that show the number of women off-road riding is much higher. You know, so they are getting into the sport. And I think perhaps because when you off-road ride, you can get, you know, a five-year-old on an off-road motorcycle. 
right? So the mother will come out with the five-year-old and do some off-road riding. Um, it's a little bit diff more difficult with on-road because you have to be at least 16 before you can start. Um, so if we're speaking specifically about on-road, I think that the, um, you know, the answers would be different if we're, other than if we're looking at motorcycling in general. I mean, it's always really curious to me, you know, working for a major brand, when I look at advertisements and, you know, communications and promotional materials that's like promoting riding, you never see groups of women riding. You see uh, co-ed groups where there's less females than males in those images, whether it's like a static poster, whether it's a video, um, but you don't see groups of women. The, the solo female rider is either like a, you can do it, go get your license, uh, but you don't see groups of all women riding, but those are the groups that I see coming through our dealership all the time. They're well coordinated, they're educated, they are very technically savvy in their riding skills, slow maneuvers, um, vehicle maintenance, um, you know, and, and this is a sport that where they get together and celebrate it, but you don't see that in traditional marketing or communications. So, well, I think that's changing. And, um, you know, people like yourself at Blackridge, other manufacturers, they are starting to put women in front when they're doing their advertising. And like anything, it, it takes, you know, generations sometimes unfortunately to make these changes but if we can be part of the change and we can start it now why not and if i've noticed over the last year or two a lot of again manufacturers and people marketing motorcycle gear they are putting those female faces in the forefront and so and that's what we need you know we need to be have them in the forefront because the more often that somebody can look at an advertisement, an ad, et cetera, and see themselves, they're more apt to say, hey, maybe this is something I can do or I want to do. I agree. I, I still sometimes get, um, I'll pull into someplace, take off my helmet, and it's like, oh, that's a girl. It's like, <laughs> to me, I've been riding so long, it's like, yeah. So getting more women involved, and, and, and it is, when I started, I had men's gear. That's all I had was men's gloves that didn't fit me properly. The, the um, gear manufacturers are mm. catering to women. When you go into a, your shop, you have women's gear that actually fits me. Um, I had to buy a men's jacket and the sleeves were down here and I had enough room for another person around the waist and none in my chest and now I can go out and I can buy gear that fits me specifically which is really 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 an improvement and, and each year it seems to be getting more and more. Some manufacturers are manufacturing motorcycles that are more geared to women which is really really nice to see. Um, but I do agree the more faces of women that we can see in advertising says, hey, I can do that for somebody that's sitting kind of wishy-washy or, or unsure. I always wanted to do that, but I don't know if I can. I so how we can get manufacturers to do that is through mm -hmm. things like this and through our participation in riding and I think and that's, our voices, that's I two think. things we've heard really clearly I here from the feedback we've had from many of the female riders that have come through is um, you know, initially, or a lot of dealerships still feel like the ladies section is an afterthought, right? So you got some sparkly shirts and, and some cute clothes and, and it's got pink, pink on it on. and it says Harley. And, but you know, um, even when I first started here, it didn't really feel like there was, um, like some thought into the women riding, um, and what they might want to see when they come in. So, um, there's been a lot of thoughtful cultivation and I'm really pleased that we see a lot of female manufacturers. Um, and local makers and, and being able to carry their product and also having events that where women don't feel as like an afterthought right so um, the event isn't hey here's a man's riding space and like great thanks for tagging along and you know we've got some stuff over there for you to look at and shop but actually having a uh, sorry I think someone started up a motorcycle so I can hear in the background uh, ha having thought into what women want to see <laughs> might be. Like um, having events just for women, having mixed events, having events that cater to all age ranges and putting some thought into what like a non-traditional 
community space looks like has been, um, I think, something that we've been really focused on for the last little while. And I feel has been really successful in terms of making it feel like there's a community here for female ridership. Um, that isn't an afterthought, that it's like the forefront Welcome of what me. we're doing. Mm-hmm. Sharon mm-hmm. Brooks, you had mentioned that riding is your life now and, you know, it's something that you love. And uh, tell us about what that journey has been like from you, for you, starting as a new rider to being an experienced rider and now a senior instructor in RTI. Walk us through that journey. Well, I started on a Honda 250 Custom, and I rode that motorcycle for probably 12 years, and I love that motorcycle. As a motorcyclist, to this day, I enjoy riding on back roads. If I'm going to Ottawa in my car, I, in my truck, I take the 401, the 417, 416, and get there. If I'm going on my motorcycle, I, I can go through... Algonquin and then on my way back I can come down (laughs) seven and I'm planning my journey when I'm on my motorcycle as I'm in the car get there so uh, for that bike I could everyone said oh it's way too small for you but it would do 120 kilometers an hour and if I'm riding on an 80 kilometer an hour road (laughs) I probably shouldn't be going much faster than 120 I still had power to pass I moved up to a 500 shadow Um, That motorcycle actually got run over in a parking lot with nobody on the bike and nobody in the van that ran it over. And I was mad for about 30 seconds because I thought I'd get a new bike because there's nothing like getting a new motorcycle. So then I purchased my um, FZ1, a sport touring motorcycle, because I found that that's the type of riding I like to do. I like to tour. My bike is very comfortable. Um, it's built for long distance. It has a 21 liter tank, so I can go 400 kilometers without filling up. Um, so it does a lot of things for me. And that's one of the things I think that women need to do is get a motorcycle that they love. Because if you don't love it when you sit mm-hmm. on it, you're not gonna wanna ride it. So searching out as your dealership, I was over there with, um, we were talking with Eric and he was showing someone the differences in motorcycles and and how women are are built different than men they're so that he was showing her how to steering her towards a motorcycle that she would love rather than oh just buy this one because it's a pretty color or or whatever um so through my ride i the joy of just thinking about my motorcycle makes me smile. It's like, oh, yay. And, and now that the weather's starting, the year, I'm looking out in the sun shining. It's like, yay, I'll be on my motorcycle again. As a senior instructor with RTI, when I'm doing the full M courses, I get paid to ride someone else's motorcycle. So I'm like, how does this get any better than getting paid to ride someone else's motorcycle and meeting nice people and... Uh, hopefully training people and getting their skills where they need to be to keep ourselves safe. Are there any particular there. rides that stand out when you reflect back on your your time riding and as you've elevated from bike to bike to bike, um, did your confidence in riding in terms of distance, duration, riding style change? And is there, you know, like a really epic ride or like a ride that just really went sideways and you're like, oh, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> Um, no, no sideways rides. I've, uh, I've been pretty darn lucky. Um, and my attitude towards my ride is I've, I never stop learning. I'm experienced, but I'm still a learning. Um, if, I, if I make a mistake, which I still do on occasion, I look back at myself and evaluate what the mistake was and what caused. Maybe I have to do an emergency break, for example. What was I doing? Was I following too close? Was I riding too fast for the conditions? Was I thinking about something else? Because riding a motorcycle is a chance to um, be focused on the task at hand and it keeps me safe. I have been to Europe and ridden the Alps twice on my motorcycle, so of course they are epic and uh, yeah, waiting for this COVID thing to get rid of, so we're on our next adventure. Um, Sharon and I both went on, on my second trip I went, Greg and I went on our first, and then six of us instructors um, with RTI went on our second trip. And there was actually four women and two men in the group. So the women over uh, was a bigger percentage of the men that went. And and it's just, um, yeah, you dream of the day that I get to go on another adventure. 
I've been across Canada. One of my favorite places is mm. Gas Bay. Kind of because it's easy to get there quickly and then you can spend a lot of time. So if I only have five days, I can go and do Gas Bay in, uh, in a trip and still teach every on the weekends <laughs> on the other side. I still want to go to Newfoundland. That's one of, the, I've heard that it's one of the most beautiful places in Canada to ride. But the other Sharon hasn't <laughs> given me three weeks <laughs> off in the summer yet. So I have to talk to her about that, getting that job done. Um, but even riding through Ontario, um, up north, going across on the Chichimon, and when you come out the Chichimon, the motorcycles are all coming up out of the boat and riding through the islands and up through Sault Ste. Marie. There's so many places to ride that are, as I said, it's about the journey, not mm -hmm. about uh, the destination when you're on a so motorcycle. So Sharon St. Croix, you mentioned that you came into the sport more in a professional capacity initially um, through your introduction to RTI. Tell us a little bit what, about what your riding journey has been from coming at it from a place of employment to now a passion that you love and continue to advocate for. For sure. So my background is uh, sports admin. So I was uh, working in Ottawa, actually, for um, in the national sports field. And, um, you know, I was the executive director for a sport and my whole work week was constantly, you know, explaining to the government why you're getting money and why you're spending it, et cetera. And I was just over that because I wanted to be part of the action. And so I was looking for something different saw this come up um, located in Toronto. I had nothing keeping me in Ottawa, applied for it, got the job, which was shocking because as I said, I had never been on a motorcycle before, but it was a, a startup organization. And I think that's what they were looking for. Somebody that had a lot of administrative background. So when I started, I thought, gee, you know, I really need to know what this is all about. Um, if I'm going to be talking to people and encouraging them to do it, I should probably try it out. And uh, I took the, the basic riding course and uh, I loved it. I was, the, the course was amazing. I found it so easy to learn based on the way that it was taught and just riding just was so much fun. I thought, well, how come I haven't done this before again? Because I didn't know anybody that was really involved in it. So I was never exposed to it. And um, so I went through the courses started off on a suzuki gs 500 rode that for a few years and then uh, uh upgraded to a yamaha fz 600 really liked that bike until it was stolen from my condo parking lot <laughs> so but again it's like oh well i have insurance money let's buy a new bike um and so now i have a, a kawasaki versus and like Sharon, you know, it's the type of riding that I like to do. I like to go on longer rides. Um, so, you know, it's a comfortable seating position. It can go, like Sharon mentioned, you know, the, the tank can take me, you know, 450 kilometers easily. Uh, so it just matches my type of, of riding. And uh, it's interesting, when I first started, I was so nervous about getting to my destination. You know, at that time we didn't have, you know, GPS and all these kinds of things. And, and it was like, I had to keep thinking, I gotta take this street and then I gotta take this road and I have to take this road. And I would stop so many times to kind of look at the map and try and figure out where I was going to get to where I was going. And I was out on a ride with somebody once and they said, you know what? You know that your destination is Northeast. So when you're riding, take some roads that go north, take some roads that go east. And it was, you know, and, and so I thought, okay. And so we are going along and we found some amazing roads. I was just turning on this road because I need to go east, turning on this road because I need to go north. And that was the moment where it clicked, you know, like they say, it's not the destination, it's the journey. And, and that, that moment was one of the aha moments about what's really, what real writing is really about. And that kind of changed my whole, you know, it made me enjoy it that much more. And, um, you know, as Sharon said, we traveled to Europe together, which was absolutely amazing. I was so nervous going there, seeing some of the roads that we were gonna be on, but uh, 
again, Gas Bay, you know, down in the States. Um, it's just, there's just so much to discover. And it's amazing the people that you meet and the little towns that you find, you know, off the beaten path. It's like, those are the best memories, the ones that aren't planned. Um, so yeah, I just feel so privileged to be doing what I'm doing and, and you know, being so close to the sport. Well, as we look forward to International Female Ride Day and the upcoming riding season, what are you most excited for? Uh, well, uh, I'm excited for having a season that starts on time and is not interrupted, <laughs> um, <laughs> as it has been in the last two years. Uh, but we are always excited about you know, working in the office, I get to speak to the students before they actually get to the course. And that's when you hear their apprehension, their nervousness, their excitement. And so I really, really enjoy hearing their stories even before their experience, you know? So I'm looking forward to get having, you know, a large number of people smiling at the end of their courses again. And Sharon, what about you? Yeah, for me, it, 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 for me, it's riding, um, getting on my motorcycle. But teaching for me is, um, it never gets old. Um, if someone's struggling at the start of Saturday morning, and sometimes there's tears, and oh, I'm, I'm, I'm done. It's like, just let's go, let's, let's make it till noon. We'll decide at noon. And then by the time that you work through, as Sharon said, our course is built for beginners and it building blocks. So we encourage them to build, build, build. You can't learn everything all at once. And then on Saturday afternoon, when we're riding our last lesson, which is called Curve Speed Judgment, which is curves is why we kind of ride, and I'll, they'll be riding past and I give them a thumbs up and they can't wipe the smile off their face. They, it's, they've been bitten. And then they're, um, they come to me, they get emotional. And they come to me before they're going home. Thank you for making me stay. Thank you for encouraging me to just get over that little apprehension that I had because, uh, yeah, it's really cool. And you'll see, I still see students, they'll come up. And uh, I was riding down the 401 and I stopped at Milton. And a student came up and I said, they said, I saw your helmet going by on the 401, so I came to say hi. <laughs> I'm like, I've made a difference and I've, I've made somebody start to feel the joy of motorcycling that, that I feel. So I've had a little bit of a part in that. I've tried to get my girlfriends to ride. They, I can't get any of my girlfriends to ride. They think I'm a little bit crazy. One of my girlfriends, her husband, uh, forbid her from doing it. Mm -hmm. I'd be the first, I'd be booking the course the next day if it was me. but. Yeah, so most of my ride, yeah, no kidding. All right, you said I couldn't do this, okay. So most of my riding, uh, we talk about solo or r group riding. Most of the people that I ride with now are my fellow instructors because we're all passionate and we teach. So a lot, most of my friends do not ride. My sister rides, my brother does not. So the girls in our family ride. What was that? I worked in a riding community, so it wasn't too hard. I mean, basically, yeah. as Sharon said, the majority of people that I ride with are instructors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my, I, I had a, my partner rides, so him and I did most of our riding together. Um, and then when we joined RTI, we really do mostly ride with, uh, because really none of our friends outside of the RTI community mm -hmm. actually ride. And when we go away with them, they'll take my dog in the car so that Greg and I can both ride. <laughs> so I'm curious to know. Oh. Yeah. Well, like I said, I wanted to go mm -hmm. to Thailand. I am going on a international ride before the end of 2022. I don't know whether it's going to be Thailand. The reason I want to go to Thailand is because <laughs> I love Thai food. That's, and the north, and it's in the northern mountains. So the ride is, I've heard, is absolutely spectacular. But yeah, I could go for a whole week of just Thai food. My other half doesn't like <laughs> rice, so I don't know what he's going to eat from over there. <laughs> yeah, and and like I said, the Canary Islands for next. 
I do have holidays. Um, like I'll go to Mexico for a week, but they're always last minute. Somebody will phone up and say, hey, do you want to go? But my motorcycle vacations are always planned. Like, okay, I've got this book time off. I am going somewhere on my mm -hmm. motorcycle. Yeah. Doesn't matter if it's raining. Doesn't matter. I'm still going. So I know Michelle has a question, but I want to give yeah. Sharon a chance to answer the same mm -hmm. question. What's your next ride? Well, hopefully I'll be going to Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we Sharon and I have kind of got the bug. I don't think I'm going anywhere on internationally. I don't think either of us are going anywhere without each other. Yeah, I mean, just getting on the bike and riding because you know what? Um, and I think Sharon alluded to this earlier. When you're on the motorcycle, you you don't have time to think about anything else except what you're doing. And so, you know, especially over the last two years with all the added stress in life and anxiety that people have been going through, when you're on your bike, I can't be thinking about what emails did I didn't respond to? Who do I have to be in touch with? How is this, you know, you have to be thinking about what you're doing. And at the end of a day of riding, like a nice long day of riding, mentally you're so refreshed. You know, and that's what I'm looking forward to because there's nothing else that I do that right now that gives me that sense of mental refreshment. You know, when you sleep, you're, you're refreshing yourself physically, but it's that mental kind of renewal that you need that riding really gives. Michelle, I think you had a couple questions for the ladies. I agree. Yeah, I was just curious, since you both say that um, instructors tend to be your riding group now, and that's who you're gravitating towards for group rides. As women working in the industry, how have you seen the industry change in terms of female participation from the business side of things? Uh, we have um, probably, I would say, close to 20% female instructors. Um, I do think that we have quite a high percentage. Um, yeah, it's, um, I do notice that it, when dealing with manufacturers and, and dealerships like yourself, I do feel like I'm getting into contact more with females. So there, there, is, there is an increase. I mean, I wouldn't know what you know, the, the increase has been. But uh, definitely, I think that more women are working in the field for sure. Hmm. Yes, I uh, female instructors. Um, we're actually training our crew this year, and twenty five percent is female. <laughs> so <laughs> a little bit higher than our. It's always nice. Sharon and I are really excited when we get a lot of uh, female applicants. But our we groom our most of our instructors a lot of them find us online but if i'm teaching uh, a student and i think they'd be a good fit for a, 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 to become an instructor i'll mm. give them a letter so um they get a letter kind of an invite from if uh from us so a lot of our female instructors <laughs> give a lot of letters to <laughs> female students to try and We'd yeah. like to see it 50-50, but uh, I'm not sure if we're going to get there in the next couple of years. But most, most uh, one thing about RTI, we, we have different styles of motorcycles and we have different, there's very, very few courses where a woman coming to learn isn't going to have a woman on the parking lot helping them. And you see a woman's face when you get there. Because a lot of women are nervous about the coming in it and it's going to be male dominated and i'm going to be the minority here one thing about men on the course they are very very respectful when women are there much more it's a much more um calm environment when women come uh, and join the course i think they kind of want to men kind of want to show off to <laughs> impress the women rather than so they're a lot, lot more calm in their demeanor so women should not be afraid to join because it's primarily going to be a male because the, it's uh, like I said, most of the times there's a female instructor there, and the men are always very because men want to mm -hmm. see women involved as well. Get training, <laughs> get training, never stop learning. Get a motorcycle that you that fits mm -hmm. you and that you love. Wear your gear, wear your gear, 
<laughs> wear your gear. <laughs> Sharon, do you have anything else to add to that? You know, it's just to get started and, and give it a shot. You know, I mean, a lot of times, you know, some women may not really want to commit, you know, they might think that it's a huge commitment, but we do offer, you know, an introduction course, which, you know, we provide the helmet, the, the jacket, the gloves, it's three hours on a motorcycle with intense instruction. You do, you know, all you need is a driver's license, a pair of jeans and some boots, and you can go out for three hours and find out if this is what you really like. So I think a lot of times, uh, or you know, you wanna go further, right? So I think a lot of times people see, oh, motorcycle license, that means I have to buy all the gear. I have to, you know, go through the licensing process. I have to, and some people might think that it's too much or it's too daunting mm -hmm. or, you know, for whatever reason, they, they feel that they can't, go that route but there are other options that they can choose to find out whether or not it's something that they enjoy before they commit so why is uh, an event in a day like international female ride day so important and where do you want to see that in our community how do you want to see it grow in our community well, I think it's important because it goes back to what we said before about, you know, having women see women riding. So, you know, just imagine you're, you know, uh, female, you're walking down the street and then all of a sudden you see groups, you know, 20, 30 female riders come by. Like how empowering, how amazing is that? And uh, to see to see that and say, gee, that looks like something I want to be a part of. So in terms of publicity and marketing, I mean, that day is probably one of the biggest marketing opportunities to for women to see women, women riders, you know, and um, yeah, it's just a sense of community. I think it's important. Sharon. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. It's a. Uh, it needs to be um, embraced by everyone. It's getting bigger every year. When it first started, it was just a trickle, and now it's it's quite uh, prominent. I get on uh, my Facebook page, I get um, reminders all the time. It's coming up. It's uh, women promoting it. Um, riding is um, a women groups. It's, it's, it is pretty cool. It's like, uh, it's like yes, when you see a, a group of women. And there are more and more clubs that are, are women specific that if you are, you don't have mm -hmm. anybody to ride with. There's lots of groups that you can join and you can do as little or as much. And the friendships that you make through riding, even people when you're, when you're away, you'll stop and somebody will come up and say, they, they ride, nice bike, where are you coming from? And then you're chatting for 20 minutes um, in a parking lot, just about motorcycles and, and experiences that we've had. So it is a very, um, close-knit community it's kind of like we're all why do we wave to one another because hey I know what you're feeling because you're on two wheels and I'm on two wheels <laughs> so it really is a community and International Women's Ride Day is um, yeah could be a everything could be a promoted more probably but uh, we're doing mm -hmm. better mm -hmm. at it I think Michelle I know you're really riding. excited about International Female Ride Day coming up so tell us a little bit about that and the events that we have planned at the dealership. <laughs> well, I'm not going to speak to the whole Southwestern Ontario <laughs> event, but of course on uh, on the date, there's lots of ladies riding from all over uh, Southwestern Ontario, and we're happy to be the end destination for the, uh, for the Southern Ontario ride. Um, so we have the privilege this year of uh, sharing that with Apex, and we hope to see good weather so that uh, we've been told four to 500 <laughs> lovely ladies might roll into our parking lot uh, after a good ride around lunch hour and then hang out here for a while. Uh, we've got some, uh, uh, some female vendors who will be set up, some food trucks, some live music. So um, back to what Sharon said, it's just really about exploring that sense of community and uh, making everyone feel welcome. Um, I think it's great that Apex is co-hosting. We don't care what you ride in on. Uh, three wheels, two wheels, your bicycle, I mean, <laughs> your sidecar, it's all good, right? If you just are curious about it and you want to come meet some female riders and talk about getting into the sport, it's a great opportunity um, to, to, to meet up with people. If you're looking for people to ride with, 
another great opportunity to, to network with women. So I'm just very excited to have the privilege to host that here this year. So looking forward to it. And it's going to be hot and sunny and gorgeous that day. Just manifest that right there. <laughs> right. I'm manifesting it right now. Because the last two years we've tried to do this, COVID has shut us down because we weren't allowed to have more than 10 people in a parking lot. So yeah. <laughs> this is our chance. This is exactly the stuff. Um, actually, I was I was over at one of your um, promotional events with RTI and uh, one of your evenings, and I actually ran into a female, a friend from my drum corps days, and she arrived. I'm like, <laughs> I didn't know you arrived, and we're still we're in touch now, just from... I was over. Hey, I know you. I didn't D- know does you this mean that you're willing cool. to share your drum uh, corps skills with us for perhaps one of the upcoming events, Sharon? Oh, it's on the weekend. Yeah. She's going to be teaching. <laughs> we'll make sure it's a Thursday. Don't worry. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Absolutely. I'll come. And I'll come. I'm, I'm actually um, in the pit. I marched with the Water the Regional Police Band pre COVID. How did we not have this? Been, uh, I haven't been there since. <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, I, I got some bells, but uh, there's very little songs I, I know. That's all right. A little more, but yeah, yeah. It's funny though, that, and it is the people that you meet, um, even not knowing them. I haven't met a grumpy motorcyclist in a long time. <laughs> Well, you know, having this opportunity to bridge community and create opportunities for people to learn more about the sport of riding, find friends, network, build community in the sport of riding is something that I'm tremendously passionate about. So I feel very blessed to be able to do this and uh, spend time with each of you today. Uh, I'm so excited to see all the smiling faces coming here on Saturday, May 7th as we celebrate women in riding and you know all of the diversity and inclusivity of that it's going to be a great time so i hope that others will come out and join us i can't wait to see both of you there um what's the one message that you want to share to uh, the community watching us and, and spending time with us today before we say goodbye if you don't ride try it just try it and it could change your whole enjoyment in life. Definitely. Uh, 100% agree. If you've ever even had an inkling, boy, that's a cool looking motorcycle. If anything about motorcycling has ever ran through your brain or, or, or thought about it, do it and do it now. Not next year, not five years from now, because if you do it and you fall in love with it, um, it'll change your life. Amazing. Shall anything else yeah. you want to add? No, it's just, uh, it's been nice spending time with both of you. And I look forward to seeing you in person this year. Yes, it's very yes, exciting. Definitely. <laughs> yes. Yeah, without, a, well, no, we have to yeah. wear a mask for but a little But yeah. still, yeah. It's still in person. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and maybe maybe at some still events, that'll be really Absolutely. exciting. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Are you folks going to the bike we show? Are uh, no, not this year. In March? No? Yeah, there's a... Uh, was a, there was a lot of upheaval and it'll be nice to be back mm-hmm. to a bike show as well. Yeah. We had planned to be there in January, together. but COVID had other plans. So uh, you will definitely, <laughs> you will definitely see lots of us out in the community. And, uh, you know, this year for us is definitely a year where we want to get back to the basics of riding. We want to make sure that we're encouraging people to ride as often as they can, farther, faster, longer, by yourself, <laughs> together. You know, we're, we're going to be doing lots of that. And you know, we want to get back to being a leader in, in building that community. And we love that we have great partners next door. So, uh, you know, like our friends at the Moto Social would say, bike or no bike, good vibes only. We're here for a good time. <laughs> and uh, the more that we can talk about that and open our doors, then we're really excited to be the brand ambassador for everybody who's riding. So um, Sharon and Sharon, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, we really love that uh, we were able to have this conversation with you. Looking forward to celebrating International Female Ride Day together and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, big things on the horizon for us. And we will be posting some information about RTI on our website, how you, people can get engaged, um, you know, all the benefits and partnerships that they can take advantage of through um, Blackbridge and Rider Training Institute. Uh, so we will post that. 
and uh, we will go from there okay so and good luck with your 2022 season thank you. yeah thank you you thank too you. thanks so much for thanks. having us